Anybody hear me? Everybody hear me? We're gonna get this. We're gonna get this show started. So wave if you can hear me. All right. All right. Three people. Can well, welcome everybody to the 2018 Nam show. It's the Ibanez booth. Thanks for getting up extra early. Uh, we have an extra special surprise for everybody this year. I'm sure people in attendance yesterday saw it, but um, this year we're releasing. Our brand new Ibanez model, the AZ. And here it is in all of its 24 fret glory. We also have a 22 fret model available. Um, the AZ is um, the culmination of the entirety of the Ibanez department as designers, as guitar manufacturers, and as visionaries really to attack a part of the market that we felt we weren't properly represented in. And this, guitar represents many years of uh, countless prototyping, uh, design changes, um, and really just the input of the entire global guitar market into something that we really, truly feel that it's something very special and we're very excited to announce it here at the NAMM show this year and to share it with all of you and the guitar community. The Ibanez represents, the Ibanez AZ represents many different um, design features that I've never before seen in an Ibanez guitar. Some of the few things uh, that I can speak about right now is this is the first Ibanez production model that features a roasted maple neck. As you can see here, um, it has a synchronized tremolo, non-locking, brand new tremolo that we developed, we partnered with Goto in Japan, and it features on the Prestige models, titanium saddles as well as the titanium sustain block. Uh, the neck shape, and I, I highly uh, encourage everybody to grab one, the neck shape is uh, the result of many different prototypes testing. When we literally, and I say when we traveled around the world, I, I do not discount that at all. We, we literally, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, we went to every pretty much nook and cranny of the guitar community to get the the, the optimal result in the next shape. And by and large, this guitar represents our foray into what we are considering a new phase of modern guitar playing. And um, to help us launch this new model, we've partnered with some of the best modern guitar players that we know today. I'm gonna to introduce you to them and we're gonna talk a little bit more about the AZ. So I'd like to introduce Mr. Martin Miller and Mr. Tom Quayle. Martin and Tom, we at Ibanez are very familiar with you guys, but maybe not everybody else out there is. So you want to give us a little bit of your background? Sure. Okay, guys, can you hear me? Yeah. Hope you're having a good show. Um, my name's Tom Coyle. As you can tell from my accent, I'm from the UK. I'm actually from a, a, a city called Leeds. Um, sorry for the feedback. In the north of the UK. Um, I'm a jazz musician by training, but I play far too many notes to actually be called a jazz musician. Uh, so I'm kind of a jazz fusion guy, this new fusion term. Um, so I did a jazz degree back in 1999, so I'm quite old now. But um, yeah, that was kind of my schooling. And then for years and years and years, I've been a massive Ibanez fan. So I did the shred thing a lot as well. And now, I guess from my perspective, 
kind of exist in this world, very similar to Martin, where we cross over multiple genres, play over crazy changes, play far too many notes, and um, also do a lot of tuition material. I'm kind of known a lot for that as well. Um, so I have lots of tuition material that kind of teaches people to play jazz and fusion. That's kind of my bag as well. Uh, work for companies like Lick Library, doing lots of tuition material as well. Uh, same as Martin, Jam Track Central, Guitar Interactive Magazine. So we kind of cross over multiple boundaries in terms of media. Um, and last year, one thing you guys might want to check out that um, kind of I'm very proud of is the Elba Triangle album that came out last year as well. Later on today, I'm going to play you some of that stuff on this booth actually. Uh, we'll give you the performance times. But yeah, that's kind of my background, jazz fusion musician from the UK, from a fairly small kind of city. And uh, it's amazing to be involved with these guys. It's an absolute honor. So thank you. My name is Martin Miller. Uh, I come from Leipzig, Germany, as you can hopefully not hear from my accent. Um, I, my biography is very much similar to Tom's in that I grew up uh, uh, starting to play guitar in my early teens, went to conservatory for a couple of years, got professionally trained and eventually made it to uh, Dresden College of Music uh, where I graduated in 2010. I'm now, I've now come full circle because uh, for the last two years I've also been teaching at that same institution. Um, yeah, I'm a, I guess I'm a rock guitar player by trade. This is how I grew up. My first band was a school band. We played all kinds of rock covers. Leonard Skinner, Deep Purple, the whole nine yards. <laughs> and yeah, uh, after, my, after my graduation, I fell into kind of a deep hole trying to figure something out with my life. What do you do when you have a degree in music performance and music pedagogy? If you don't want to teach and if you don't want to play cover gigs all, all day, I uh, made a firm choice to only be working on my solo career from, from then on out and I started writing and producing an album that came out in 2013, it's called The Other End, that's my solo album. In the meantime I also got uh, into Jam Track Central which is a website that I'm sure most guitar players who check out these guitars know, um, where I do instructional products uh, as well as some other stuff. They also released my album as a label. So. Uh, in the last years, I've been uh, mostly involved in production work, mixing work, guitar sessions, those types of things. And in the last couple months, or in the last year, I actually discovered my passion for producing live videos. So I uh, keep dragging my band into the, the studio nowadays, uh, which consists of some phenomenal players. And I did the same with this guy, so I had him sit in with my band. We produced uh, like a double live album worth of stuff, uh, which is going to come ov over the next couple of weeks featuring these uh, two fantastic guitars that we're holding in our hands. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. It's all completely free as well, which is so cool. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Now we know a little bit more about you guys. Um, Martin, you've had a, a few years relationship with us officially as an Ibanez artist. Tom, welcome to the team. Thank you very much. Very happy to have you. Um, but what you guys have in common right now is you're both uh, Ibanez, our first AZ signature artists. Mm -hmm. And so to focus a little bit on the AZ, why was it, you, you guys are both familiar with the RG and, and our past electric guitar offerings. So what is it about this one, Tom and Martin, you now too? that you guys could speak about, about the AZ model that, that's really sealed your deal as Ivan as artist. Yeah, so, um, you know, we're, we, we were growing up in the 90s, both of us, and if you're a guitar player in the 90s, a young guitar player growing up in the 90s, there's just no way around uh, fanboying over Ibanez and the heroes that play those axes, so um, we both have a long history adoring Ibanez guitars, and I mean, I've owned literally dozens of Ibanez guitars in my past, uh, so to be an official part of the family was it was basically no question. It was it was a no-brainer to to one day be part of that family. Um, however, I've been I've been going back and forth with a couple of models. I've been playing the RG series. I had a couple of J Customs, very very nice guitars. I played the Telmans. I played the Artist. I played the Art Stars. I played Seven Strings. I, I went through the whole program. Um, but uh, that was me basically having multiple guitars for multiple, mul multiple purposes. And the big difference with this one is that this is the all-purpose guitar. This is the Desert Island guitar. This is the one guitar that I take to my gig and I know I can do it pretty much all on it. So that's the main difference between this and, and let's say an RG. It's still that same level of comfort. Um, 
but the whole appearance and the functionality is just more geared towards versatility and kind of doing it all, uh, no matter what the situation calls for. I remember um, going and starting my jazz degree and turning up with an RG760 with a blue flame top and gold hardware. And the look that I was given, because I was the guy who didn't have the 175 or the arch top, and I ended up actually with a, an Ibanez 70s kind of lawsuit style guitar. And I had AS, uh, 80s and all those kind of things. But the RG was always the, the guitar that in my head was the dream guitar, because that's what all my heroes played. So as Martin says, this basically gives us players who are now a little bit older, we kind of have this, this vibe that pointy RGs, while they're still kind of incredible guitars, and they, have, they give us that kind of shiver down our spine that our heroes played on these guitars, the visual nature of this is much more fitting for who we are as guitar players now. And I think it, that's going to appeal to a lot of a very wide spectrum of guitar players who don't play metal, they don't see themselves as pure shred players, and they want an instrument that covers more bases and visually fits with their style more. And I think the AZ does that. I think it definitely has that visual side of things that makes it a more uh, appealing guitar for kind of more modern players, basically. Um, so that was that was kind of the vibe as far as I was concerned. It's fitted my mental state as a guitar player, basically. Now what's cool about um, you guys in particular is that you guys were involved with this very early on in the AZ. From you know one from one of the first prototypes, and Tom not not long after that. So maybe you guys want to talk about the development process a little bit, and how you guys were involved, and how uh, that's all come to fruition. So yeah, um, I remember that a couple months into my official relationship with Ivanis, which started in early 2015. Um, I got sent an email from the people at Ivanis uh, saying we got we got this this idea that we want to share with you. We want to create a guitar that is a so-called player's player's guitar. So the guitar for people who have extremely high demands uh, for an instrument as far as performance and reliability and sound goes, etc. Um, and they wanted to be to be a part of it, which to me is freaking amazing because you know I'm this little East German guy. You know I grew up behind the wall. <laughs> no, I didn't grow up behind the wall, but I was born behind the wall. So for me to have one of the, the greatest companies in the entire guitar industry ask for my opinions it seemed absolutely mind-blowing and this tells you a lot about this company uh, about how, how great and how appreciative they are of their artists so that's a big thumbs up um, so yeah eventually they they went to Leipzig to my hometown they came to my tiny apartment and they showed up with a piece of body wood and a bunch well, a bunch is good it's, it's a big bunch of files with designs of headstocks logos body shapes finishes, uh, pickup configurations, etc. etc. And we just went through the we just went through it all and I I, I dragged I, I whipped out all my guitars that I had and said yeah I like the, the, the body shape on this one feels very comfortable. The pickups of this one sound great. This has a very nice neck, etc. So it was just a big exchange of ideas, just kicking stuff uh, back and forth. And then as the months went by uh, we kept meeting, we kept meeting at the Ibis Guitar Festival, we kept meeting here and there. Um, and eventually the first actually playable prototype showed up at my doorstep, which was very close to what this is already. So from they, they pretty much nailed it the first time. From there it was just tiny tweaks uh, that they had to do, with, maybe with pickups, with just tiny details. Um, and as the year went by, the project became bigger and bigger and bigger. And then at some point I think Tom got involved. Yeah, I was really lucky because by the time I got involved, these guys had already done all the hard work. And I remember being somewhere around the show, and I remember being ushered by, by these guys into a tiny room, the Ibanez Cupboard, basically, and being handed a guitar, which was basically the prototype. Very, as Martin said, very similar to these guitars in almost every respect. It was pretty much a finished AZ. There were just a few tweaks left to do. Being given this guitar, and I could only hold it like this. There was no room in the cupboard at all. So all I could do was hold the neck, and I was totally blown away by the neck immediately. We're all used to Ibanez, have, they're very innovative with their necks. They make Wizard 2s, the Prestige necks. They're thin, they're super fast, they're wide. We all know what Ibanez necks are supposed to feel like. But this is something completely different. And as Mike said, you really need to go and feel this neck. And it was the first thing that when I, they actually handed me the guitar, I was blown away immediately by how precise and how, how comfortable and functional this neck is. It's so nice to play. 
profile is perfect. Then feeling the stainless steel frets, feeling how smooth everything was. This just felt like every super high-end boutique custom-made guitar I'd ever played. And so, after I'd kind of had a go on this guitar, I couldn't plug it in at all. I kind of walked away really excited for what was going to happen with Ibanez, and I was playing a completely different brand at the time. Very, very expensive, very high-end handmade guitars. And I remember thinking, this feels very similar to what you'd expect from a high-end handmade boutique guitar. Walking away very excited, we've got nothing more of it except that this is going to be cool. Ibanez are going to do really well with these guitars. And then a few months later, receiving an email out the blue saying, oh yeah, Tom, we're coming to your hometown and we've got a prototype guitar for you. We want to know what you think of it. And, um, you know, we thought maybe you'd like a signature model. My head exploded and they arrived at the house with the signature, you know, well, not with the signature guitar, but with the prototype. And again, just every feature on this guitar is so perfect for players like us. You know, it just is so versatile. Uh, the pickups sound fantastic. There are a few tweaks to do on the pickups at this point, but it was such a great guitar from the outset. But really, I was, I was totally blown away by it, and it really does represent everything I need from an instrument, and I think everything you need from an instrument as well. It's fantastic. You really need to try it. Yeah, that's great. And you guys bring up, you guys both brought up a point that I failed to mention is, is the pickups and how these are brand new, especially uh, voice for this guitar, Seymour Duncan Hyperion pickups. Do you guys have any uh, opinions on those and how you guys feel about these? Well, something that that is really important when you might want to make the one guitar, the Desert Island guitar, the player's player's guitar, however you want to call it, is that the entire guitar needs to be sort of middle ground. It has to be dead center so you can go in both directions, you know, it's got to be vintage and modern. It's got to be right in the middle, it's got to be bright, dark, it's got to be right in the middle. All of it's got to be right in the middle and the, the pickups serve, you know, just that. They're neither too bright, they're not too dark, they're not super high output, they're not low output. They, they, the idea behind this is that you can go in all directions that you desire, basically. Um, and what's amazing to me is that they added this dynamic switch over here, which basically doubles the amount of sounds that this guitar can make. Um, so basically you got, you got five positions with a regular switch, you engage the dynamic switch, you have five completely different wirings. Now what exactly they do, you can, you can check out the, tech, uh, the, the, the specs sheets, etc. Um, just to let you know, you're going to get 10 sounds for the price of 5. Um, plus, the tone pot, which is something that I work with a lot, it works perfectly. It just does exactly what it's supposed to do. Same with the volume pot. If you watch my playing, I keep fiddling with the volume pot the entire time. And this one just cleans up perfectly, you know? You can go with, even with one pickup, you, even though you have all this versatility with the pickups, you can, you can go from lead to rhythm to clean with just the volume pod and the sound won't change which is something that I was really looking for in a guitar and this this does just that so it's very nice to have. I remember uh, when Rocky first brought the guitar to my house one of the things that really blew me away was this is a humbucker single single you're not supposed to be able to get great jazz tones out of this other guitar with this configuration because you have a single coil in your neck and as Martin was saying there's 10 sounds on that guitar this this alter switch gives you nine sounds from a five-way switch with this particular configuration. And I remember being in the neck position and flicking the switch up and you get these two single coils wired as a humbucker in series and being unbelievably blown away by how basically this guitar had turned into an arch top jazz guitar. It's ridiculous. Again, that's something if you could plug the guitar in, try the humbucker single single, go to the neck pickup and flick the switch up and have a listen to how fat the sound is. It's crazy. So really what I'm saying is the versatility of these guitars is pretty mind-blowing. From what is basically just a humbucker single, single or two humbuckers. It's really impressive, really, really impressive. One more spec um, that's common with both these guitars is the new Goto Ibanez developed bridge. Um, you guys have any opinions or feedback on that? How are you using it? How's it, how's it been reacting to your playing? I think the tremolo for me might be in the top three features with this guitar. This is something that I've been looking for, uh, uh, forward to trying uh, for the, the longest time, ever since the, the idea of a prototype came up. So this is a newly designed Goto slash Ibanez Tremolo. It's kind of based on the Goto 510, if I'm not mistaken, but it has a couple of extra, extra features like the titanium saddles, the steel block. Uh, it has a pop-in arm. I don't have the arm right now, unfortunately. Um, I can just demonstrate this real quick. If you can hand me your arm. Very much. So you can loosen the screw, pop in the arm, 
And by the way, this works with any Edge Zero arm. So if you if you if you lose this arm, you still have an Ibanez with an Edge Zero, you can just use that. If you're like me, who loses stuff all the time, that's really awesome. So and what's really unique about this is you can lock the arm by t turning the screw, and you can decide how tight you want the arm, which is awesome because with most tremolos, it's either it's totally loose or it's totally stiff. Here you can go right in between, get all the shades of stiffness <laughs> that you want. So. Nice. Uh, um, and without having to, you know, get a wrench out and start screwing around down here and stuff like that, or having to put paper in somewhere and so like, if you're not a, a technically adept guy like me, that's really awesome. And the functionality is just, it's just perfect. It's so smooth. It's subtle. It goes up. It goes down. It's recessed. Has a has a the body wood cut out underneath it, so you can bend up just fine. It's yeah. It's I think, and I don't like to talk in extremes, and I don't like dogmas, but this might be the best tremolo of its style on the entire market. I think you nailed it. It's, <laughs> it's just fantastic. There's not, not much else to say. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right. <laughs> so the roll here. So before it gets a little too loud here at the NAMM show, okay, we're close to 10 o'clock. Um, really excited here at Ivanez to announce not only the AZ, but the TQM and the MMM1. Um, why don't you guys tell us a little about your guitars? specifically, okay. and some of the things that make them special. Okay, so obviously both guitars are based very heavily on the AZ range because we both fell in love with this range so much. But they are unique within the range. So this guitar is obviously based on the 22 fret model you can see around the corner. But unlike that model, some, some really what we had to do was kind of aesthetics and a few kind of tonal tweaks. So from my perspective, I'm at a position in my career where I've always had I call them kind of, I shouldn't say this, but I call them porno tops, so like super high-end flames and quilts and all this kind of thing. And I wanted something a bit more natural looking and a bit more kind of, I hesitate to say it because it's not the right word, but grown up for me. So this is what's called monkey pod. And I'd never heard of it before. And these guys told me about it and I saw it and immediately fell in love with it. It kind of reminds me of Chewie from Star Wars, if you're getting close. It's got this hairy vibe. But it's, it's a beautiful looking piece of wood with a kind of mahogany-esque kind of sound for the top, but it's matched with an older body, very natural looking guitar, quite unique for the Ibanez range generally. No scratch plate because that's the visual effect that I wanted. Very traditional looking kind of um, visuals in terms of the controls. Um, abalone inlays because again, I like that kind of high-end look, but it still remains natural. Um, just a beautiful looking instrument that really suits where I am as a guitar player now, where I feel I am in, in my mind and who I am as a guitar player. And I think they've really nailed it. And the really cool thing is if you see each of the monkey pod tops, because of the way the grain of the wood works, they really are unique. So it's really cool to have every guitar be its, its own unique kind of look. So uh, if you compare the two, you'll see they look very different. So uh, it's a very, very cool instrument. And uh, again, thank you so much, guys. It's a real honor to be involved with this. So, as you can see, I did go for the porno top. <laughs> I'm not as subtle as this guy. Um, for me, the biggest key feature of this guitar, and this is something that I'm really proud of, is that as of now, with all the AZ, AZ guitars that are out there, this is the only one that has a mahogany body. So it gives it a very different tonal balance, if you will. Um, I went through a couple of prototypes that had the older body, but then I was, I was contemplating what I, don't, I didn't want to mess with the guitar too much. I didn't want, didn't want to change the neck shape, the radius, those types of things. The people at Ibanez know what they're doing. This guitar, as a prototype, was also already perfectly balanced. But when I look back at all my important guitars in my career that, have, that I've played for numbers of years, they had one thing in common. They were made out of mahogany. So that's something I really wanted in this guitar because I feel that that's the, that's the sound that represents me the most. Again, it puts the guitar in a very centered place which is awesome for me because I can go either, either ways um, along with that we have this stunning transparent aqua blue uh, flame maple top which tap. Huh? Tap. Tap. yeah by the way that's tap short so I got taps if you need taps this one's got it um, chrome hardware as you can see because I wanted to have a bit more of a futuristic look as opposed to, to the giant black knobs, which are very functional, but this I wanted to be a bit more slick, if you will, as well as the abalone lace. So yeah, and it's got my tiny scribble up there, which to me is still amazing. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry for my handwriting, but that's just how I write. That's how it looks. That's how. That's what you're going to get when you buy one. 
Um, this guitar is is everything I've worked for in the last 32 years on this earth, and it's, it's the culmination of that. And I couldn't be any more proud. I want to thank Ivan so much for this. This is really unreal. Well, that, I think that concludes our press conference. Is there any in closing that you guys would like to say to the people about the AZ and, and your new signature models? Yeah, go for it. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, some, some people might not know who I am yet, and I'm cool with that, I understand that. Um, but uh, for those who know me, I want to I tell them this guitar is dedicated to everybody who, like me, comes from a tiny place, uh, a non-vibrant place, doesn't have any special opportunities in his life, or at least they think that they're not... It's for those people who don't want to make excuses. Yeah, I'm not born in this country. I don't have rich parents. I don't have this. I don't have that. This guitar is dedicated to those people as a symbol that no matter where you come from, no matter what you do, no matter what the circumstances are, if you keep doing what you, what you do, uh, you can end up in a place, in an amazing place. So you just have to stick to it, not make any excuses, be on time, be polite, uh, do good work. And I always say this, if you just keep doing what you do, you don't look left and right, but you do good work, the world will adjust around you. And this guitar is an expression of that. So I want to dedicate it to all of you who dream of ever having an, a signature model with a big brand and you keep shredding in your bedrooms. I say keep doing what you do and you'll get there. I kind of want to re reiterate what Martin said. If you'd, I was saying to these guys, if you'd taken the 15 year old Tom Quayle and you'd said to him that this was going to happen, there is no way you could have convinced the 15 year old me that this would ever happen. So what I want to say to you is very similar to Martin. It seems that dreams can come true, and if you work really, really hard, and you know, you really have passion for what you do, apparently dreams can come true. And I, again, I want to thank these guys for this opportunity. I want to thank anybody out there who listens to what we do and enjoys what we do, because we can't do this without you guys, so thank you so much. And um, go and play the guitars, because they are really, really fantastic and amazing departure for Ibanez. And I think they're going to be a huge success, so... Thanks again, guys. Thank you. I guess that wraps it up. Thanks for everybody who's watching, and thanks for everybody who's here in attendance. And like Martin, like Martin and Tom and I have said, please take some time today. Pick one of these up. I think you guys are going to be very surprised by what we're offering. And uh, long live the AZ. Yeah. Inspirational. Yeah, actually, inspirational.